नमस्कार लेट एस नाउ बिगिन विद लेक्चर थ्री ऑफ द फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल ऑन आर कोर्स सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट मॉड्यूल इज द फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल एज यू नो एंड दिस डील्स विद इंट्रोडक्शन टू सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी विल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट द फंक्शन ऑफ सेल्स एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड द रोल्स प्लेड बाई सेल्स मैनेजर्स so the different uh, topics which are covered we will be talking about the concept of a sales job uh, the changing roles of the sales force uh, the functions of sales executives and the roles played by sales managers uh, we will uh, first talk about how the sales job is unique in its own way how it is different from other jobs in the organization and we'll talk about the changing roles of uh the sales people we will be speaking about the different functions that are performed by uh, sales executives in an organization and we'll also talk about the different roles which are played by sales managers so let us start with this uh, lecture now uh, the nature uh, of the sales job uh, in fact the very nature the very characteristics of uh, the sales job is very different it is very unique uh, to other jobs in the organization um it is highly challenging where uh, you know the sales person the sales executives the sales managers are um, perform varied roles they are employers of the organization they themselves are customers of uh, the products and services very often the, they are they are their own companies uh, customers uh, they are also uh, you know members of the society and so they uh, they play different they as as a sales executive he plays different roles uh, he has the core responsibility of representing his organization his company he must plan activities uh, very often uh, the the top management sets the targets but the uh, the execution or, and fulfillment of uh, the plans and uh, you know the achievement of the targets Uh, lies on uh, the responsibility of this lies on the shoulders of the sales executive sometimes with supervision sometimes without supervision now in large organizations uh, where uh, the corporates have their headquarters or the corp you know and they have their regional offices zonal offices they have their different branch offices in such organizations the sales executive or the frontline sales people field sales people uh, do not have much of a role in the planning of course uh, they do provide some inputs uh, with respect to uh, you know uh, you know estimates or when when the top management asks them for uh, you know their inputs uh, with, you know regarding the estimate of sales uh, that could happen in a particular year um, apart from that uh, the sales executives or the field sales persons do not have much role in goal setting this kind of an approach was also seen only in a uh, in the bottom up approach uh, where which we will talk of in subsequent sessions uh, where some amount of uh, you know input is taken from the field sales persons and this input uh, is uh, taken into account while uh you know targets are set by the top management and further um, you know taken care of by the middle management but apart from that uh, uh, you know or in cases where it's a top down approach the sales executive had hardly any role he doesn't have any role uh, in the planning and in uh, setting of goals or setting of uh, targets or as we said the setting of uh, sales quotas but he is majorly uh, involved in only in only uh you know implementing uh the 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 strategies which have been formulated above or in achievement of the targets which he supposed to uh, achieve in his territory so he you know and and in this case sometimes he receives supervision from his sales managers at the branch or at the regional level and sometimes he does not receive uh, much of uh, supervision or much of guidance and uh, Uh, on the other hand in smaller organizations uh, where we do not have this kind of a big structure uh, with the corporate or with the region and the zones and the divisions etc in such cases where organizations are small the sales executive is just supposed to make his own plans and implement his own plans and set his own targets and achieve his own targets so there he is hardly got Uh, any you know uh, guidance he hardly gets any direction he hardly gets any direct uh, guidance and he must actually uh, 
attain the targets on his own. Uh, he's, the targets are set often by himself and his team members and he must achieve them as far as possible so as to be able to uh, you know, get the fun organization keep going and uh, have, have, you know, sustain itself in business. Uh, nevertheless, uh, whether it is a big organization, large organization or whether it is a small organization, sales uh, executives must work judicially for the benefit of the company. Keeping in mind uh, the concerns of the company, keeping in mind the concerns of the uh, you know, customers uh, and keeping in mind the social and ethical uh, you know, issues uh, with respect to society, with respect to the environment. So, uh, here if we look at it, he must actually, uh, be, he has different roles to perform as a salesperson, as an employer of the organization and a salesperson, as a customer himself, as a, a society, member of the society. So, uh, he himself uh, uh, is accountable to various stakeholders and he must uh, be very careful in performing the various functions so that in no way uh, does he harm the interest of his organization or of the customers or of the society and of the environment. So, in this way his job is something which is very unique because there are often conflicting interests. Uh, between interests of the various stakeholders. For example, uh, the company or the employer organization, his own organization, their interest would be profits, uh, you know, market shares and uh, the customer interest here would be a lower cost products, high quality products, uh, you know, good quality products and uh, robust products, good after sales service which could mean that uh, the company uh, you know may have to incur higher costs uh, to give that both uh, cost of the product as well as the after sales. So, but that cost uh, and, and if the costs of the uh, goods sold or manufactured by the company are high, uh, in, that, in that case uh, keeping profit margin similar to uh, you know a small profit margin keeping so that the final prices are similar to competitive products. So, the organization may have to forego uh, you know its own profits. And uh, so, there is a conflict of interest in the employer organization would want his own organization would want uh, as much as profits as much as possible, market shares as much as possible, sales as much as possible. The customer wants something which is uh, a good product, a good value proposition at, uh, at decent prices and, uh, and, and then the third important thing which we see here is the environment where uh, social and uh, you know ethical and natural environment we have to take care of the social issues, the ethical issues, uh, the natural environment uh, so that our resources are not depleted, uh, the, there is lesser damage to the environment, there is lesser pollution. So, often uh, the interests of the three stakeholders which we are mentioning here may conflict with each other. So, in this case uh, what does the salesperson do? He must sell his product at profit, he must also satisfy the customers and give them what the cust give to a customer what he wants. He must also take into account the fact that his organization uh, you know is not responsible for environmental damage or depletion of resources. So, uh, all these could be uh, really uh, you know pose a challenge meeting interests of all the various stakeholders, the conflicting interests of the various stakeholders could be a big challenge for the sales executive. Now, uh, in, you know, we will come now to the changing roles of the uh, sales force and we will see that what customers want is value and uh, to create value for customers, uh, the job of the salesperson is just not limited to achieving the targets, but about creating this value, you know, amount trying to see that what is the kind of benefit that he can give. Uh, to the customer in return for the amount spent by the customer. So, it is about creating value for the customer. A value here uh, being defined as uh, a ratio what of what the customer gives to what he gets. So, the any and every customer would want a value proposition. What is a value proposition? The value proposition is the entire set of benefits or the bundle of benefits which a, a company can offer to the customer. So, it is the product and uh, the services and uh, the benefit at the right price, at the right place, at the right time and uh, continually providing satisfaction to the customer, uh, not once but always. So, uh, the job of the salesperson here is not limited just to sell, but it is actually to create this value. And uh, so, and, and this is important because if the salesperson contributes to creation of value, 
the company would be able to get a sustained profit, long term profit. Now, how does the salesperson contribute to this value? He is most important, uh, you know, input would be in terms of uh, understanding customer needs and wants, uh, communicating with the customers, be it B two B, or uh, in case of B two C, he would communicate with the members of the trade channel, get feedback, get inputs about how. Uh, the uh, customer would be satisfied maximally. So, uh, you know, uh, he, this is one way where he can actually uh, contribute. His, what, what the kind of feedback that he takes, you know, he, he gets and he communicates uh, to uh, his company. The, th this kind of input could be immensely beneficial towards creation of value. The objective of the salesperson is not just limited to uh, only maximizing benefits, but it is also minimizing the costs, uh, which is beneficial for both customers as well as for the company. Now, when we are talking about value and we are talking about the ratio between inputs and outputs, on one hand we are talking about the benefit or the output uh, for the customer, but we also have to think about the inputs, uh, you know, uh, that the, the benefit that the customer gets uh, out of the purchase is one part. The other part is what does the customer pay and any and every customer would want to pay as little as possible and get as much as he would can get. Now, to get this value or to be able to get maximum benefit by paying the minimum, um, you know, is a customer's interest, but the company's interest would lie in earning as much uh, profits as possible. So, uh, so where do, uh, where does the decision, where, where could be, where, where, what brings, that brings us to a situation where we have to think about the benefit uh, that the customer gets and at the less price that he pays and keeping in mind the company's uh, motive or the objective of earning uh, profits, large market shares, uh, what becomes important is minimization of cost. Now, the, the, the Salespeople also can help minimize uh, the cost of the product uh, in, uh, you know, by suggesting uh, what actually is in demand, what is sell, what is selling, what are products that sell, what are products that do not sell, so that those products which do not sell can be pruned uh, rather than uh, being kept in the product mix, and the such products need not be manufactured, need not be. So, stocked at uh, you know with the retailers and uh, such products could be out. So, so that would be one way how costs are minimized. Another and and uh, the non-profit making products can be pruned. Another way uh, by which costs could be minimized would be by ensuring that the trade channel or the channel members uh, are kept in control and uh, the the kind of costs that are incurred in maintaining longer channels. Uh, can be minimized because a huge amount of money today we, as we see actually goes in in maintaining a distribution channel. So, channel members who are efficient could stay and be a part of the distribution ch you know, channel, but those who are not uh, could be kind of um, uh, removed. That again input or feedback would come from sales people where uh, the sales people is able to provide inputs into uh, what does customer prefer as a channel, is it online, is it offline, if it is offline who are favored retailers, who are favored stockists, so who are the ones who give maximum business to a company. So, that feedback also uh, would come from the sales people. Also, uh, the sales people by minimizing their own selling expenses can contribute to reduction in costs. As we have seen yesterday that the gross profit, uh, you know, which we obtain from uh, the revenue uh, minus uh, the uh, cost of goods sold uh, can be, for the, which gives us the gross profit. This gross profit would actually is one parameter, uh, which, but, but if we actually look at another important accounting uh, formula, which is the net profit, the selling expenses subtracted from the gross profit will give you the net profit. So, if the, the selling expenses here uh, with reference to boarding, lodging, travel, uh, local advertising or even entertaining uh, clients, giving them gifts, etc., is reduced, again the cost would be minimized. So, the objective of salesperson is not only limited to providing value to the customer, maximizing benefits for the customer, but also lies in minimizing the costs, which would be beneficial for both the company as well as the customer. Once the costs are minimized, keeping in mind a certain level of profit margin, 
the company would still be able to gain a price advantage over competitors and in this way they would be able to gain a competitive edge in the market. Okay, so uh, now talking about value addition to the organization, the sales staff should focus on maximizing profits for the company. But again, as I said, this should not be at the cost of overcharging customers. Payment should be collected, uh, you know, should be collected on time to maintain a healthy working capital for the company. Uh, it's very important that uh, the company gets a good inflow of working capital so that uh, it is able to manage its uh, production cycle and uh, there is no deficit of funds in any way. So, an important task of the sales force is uh, to ensure that uh, th there is uh, cash is received or payments are received by uh, the you know from, from, from the various members of the channel to, or to the uh, company and uh, the receivables maintaining a record of uh, order to payment cycles as to when orders were received, when the consignment was delivered and when payments were received. So, maintaining a record of this order to payment cycle is an important uh, function of the sales force. The sales force also has a task of following up on payments uh, with the members of the trade channel in the, in the case of B2C. In the case of B2B, they also have to follow up with their major clients or B2B, B2B customers about uh, receivables and about payments so that the company is able to you know, ensure a good working capital and can actually uh, fulfill or, or, or can actually keep on going with the production cycle. So, proper credit history analysis should be done before offering huge credit payments to customers and uh, while uh, this is being this is done by companies again uh, the customer uh, the, the, the sales people have an important role to perform. Uh, also uh, while negotiations are done especially in the case of a B2B scenario uh, where uh, del, you know prices may be negotiated upon terms of delivery may be negotiated upon uh, receivables may be uh, or cash receivables and timely pay, you know payment of uh, you know uh, payments may be uh, negotiated upon with long say long uh, you know in, in, with low interest rates or with longer repayment uh, or payment terms in such cases uh, companies seek inputs again from sales people because while on the one hand uh, the company would want big clients big customers but on the other hand it would also want that uh, payments are received on time and hence uh, sales people are, are are asked for such inputs to give information on the you know credit history uh, uh, analysis of the customers or the big client so that companies get keep getting their inflow of funds and there is no risk of losing out on any money. Now, uh, when, when, we, when we are going to talk about the various uh, functions of sales executives, let us first talk a little bit about the levels of a sales management position. So, uh, if we look at uh, the sales level, we have uh, the lower or the first level sales managers uh, who actually operate at the territories and at the branch. And then we have the middle level sales managers who operate at the regional or the zonal level. And then we have those who operate at the national level and uh, going up to uh, the you know the, the vice president and the CEO level. So, we have the first or lower level sales managers who are those who operate who are either sales trainees or sales persons or sales representatives and they function in the field, they work in the field, uh, they, they you know take care of uh, the, uh, the grass root and then uh, we also have people at the branch sales. Uh, uh, as, as branch sales officers or area sales managers or district sales managers. So, these are those who are the first or lower level sales managers. Then we have the middle level sales managers who are who work at the zonal level or the regional level or the divisional level. And then we have the top level sales managers who are the national sales managers or the vice president sales, vice president marketing or the president or the CEO of the company. So, these are different levels of sales management positions and as you see at the lower level we have uh, the sales executives, the sales trainees, the sales personnel, but as they move above uh, in, into from the middle to uh, to the top level, they assume more uh, uh, you know important titles and positions as managers, and their activities are not only uh, you know not only relate to sales, but they relate to the marketing function. 
So, while at the first and lower level we see more uh, the, the dominance of the selling activity and the do, uh, dominance of the sales function, as they move up the middle and the top level we see uh, marketing assuming a more important role. Now, what are the functions of sales executives? Sales executives have two broad sets of functions, they have the planning function and the operating functions. So, let us discuss these a little more. Now, what are the operating functions? Operating functions here relate to Salesforce management. Yesterday, we did discuss in the first uh, uh, lecture about Salesforce management, which means going in for a analysis of the manpower requirement, recruiting, selecting, training, uh, motivating, performance appraisal, uh, directing, guiding, uh, setting up of quotas or sales targets and uh, territory management. And this is one a big operating function which uh, sales executives perform. Apart from that, they handle relationships with executives and other department uh, in the company because uh, marketing or sales just not, uh, does not operate in a watertight compartment. They have their relationships with uh, executives in the R&D, with executives in the operations and production department, with people in the finance department, in the purchase department, in the HR function and so forth. So, they also handle relationships with executives in other departments. They communicate uh, and uh, forge relationships with their uh, customers and they maintain these relationships whether it is their actual customers, existing customers, current customers or whether it is their prospects and they also maintain relationships with their members of the trade channel, their wholesalers, the retailers, the brokers, the agents, uh, the, the transporters, the warehouse providers and, and, and so they also communicate with and coordinate with other marketing executives not only in their uh, branch but also in other branches, uh, other districts, other territories and uh, so forth. On the other hand, the planning function more relates to the sales program. Uh, formulating the sales program, uh, the strategies, the tactics to be employed, which are, we shall be discussing in the subsequent session. Uh, it also includes the organization function, which is how do you organize a sales department? Uh, is, it, is it centralized or is it decentralized? Do, do, do they prefer a, a you know, um, structure which is uh, a more uh, product based structure or a customer based structure or a geographical based structure? or a hybrid structure and then also uh, dealing with uh, sales forecasting, sales budgeting and the control element. So, these are what constitute the planning function for sales executives. So, the planning function is more uh, strategic while the operating function is more tactical. The planning function relates to uh, setting up of targets and uh, ar arranging for a sales organization. Uh, to, to, to be able to achieve those targets, but uh, the operating functions include more tactical functions of day to day dealing with customers, with clients, with members of uh, with other with other executives in the organization, in the marketing department, outside the marketing department and the entire sales force management. Now, uh, the emphasis that the sales people or the sales executives would sales executives would give to uh, with good with, would have to give would depend upon uh, whether they give importance to the planning function or to the operating function. The emphasis that they would have to give would depend upon one the size of the organization and the extent of operations. So, is the organization large or small? Uh, is it dealing with you know domestic operations or is it uh, dealing with international operations as well? Uh, is it uh, you know um, is it, is, does it have a, you know, an extensive network or does it have a you know, very selective uh, network so, or, or in terms of distribution channels etc. So, that is one. Second is the kind of organization structure, is it centralized, is it decentralized. The kind of products and services that the organization makes and sells is also a, a factor which will determine whether sales executives must focus more on the planning function or on the operating functions. Apart from that, the type of customers, whether it is a dealing with uh, the B2B or the organizational buying, you know, selling to, uh, you know, um, uh, industrial buyers or whether it is selling to institutional buyers or whether the ma major segment is the B2C or whether it is the government uh, buyers who are the major types of customers. This would also determine whether a, com a sales executive must focus on the planning function or he must focus on the operating function.
Now let us come to the various roles played by sales managers. So today initially as we spoke yesterday as well that uh, we have moved from a transaction approach to a value added and to a partnership approach. So there has been a big change in the role of the modern sales manager. Instead of a uh, demanding controlling uh, volume oriented sales manager, the modern sales ma manager acts as a team leader. He's, he cannot be a boss to his sales persons. When we talk about a transactional approach, the orientation of the sales executive is just to sell and if we talk about the traditional salesperson, his focus is to gain credit for himself, to earn incentives for himself. But if we go beyond and talk about value added partnerships with clients or if we talk about consultative selling with clients or if we talk about partnerships with customers and clients, in that sense the, 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 the salesperson cannot behave in a traditional manner. He has to work with in teams, he has to work with cross functional teams, he has to uh, you know complement his skills with other people's skills so as to be giving maximum value to the customer or to the client and, uh, and, in, and so what becomes important important is that the success is shared by all team members. So uh, he cannot afford to be one who just sets targets and uh, feels that uh, salespeople should actually fulfill those targets. But then he, what his approach has to be is to work with his sales people as a team to guide them, to motivate them, uh, to complement uh, their efforts with his own knowledge, with his own experience, with his own skills and so share uh, the, in, you know, the reward, share the uh, you know, appreciation and so the modern sales manager has to direct and advise his sales people by working with them and providing them with the required authority to take decisions, he must empower them. Rather than being a boss, he must also, he must and, and other than being a boss and uh, ordering them, he must actually empower them, he must enrich them and he must give them some level of uh, you know independence to take this important decisions and of course within uh, the prescribed limits so that they work as a team and um, they, 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 they rather than as a boss to the sales people. Now, some of the important changes in the roles of the modern salesperson today are uh, enlisted as follows and we will be discussing them in the subsequent slide. He has to be a part of the strategic management team, a member of the corporate team, he has to work as a team leader, he has to deal with multiple uh, channel members and sales and marketing channels, he must build good buyer supplier relationships and he must monitor, collect and disseminate information about changes in the macro and micro environment which are faced by a company. So if we go a little more beyond, as a member of the strategic team, he must provide inputs for developing long term marketing and sales plans, uh, which would involve uh, constituents, constituents of which would involve sales forecasting, planning and implementing sales plans, sales force management, controlling the sales budget, etc. And as a member of the corporate team, uh, he has to work uh, to achieve the various strategic and tactical objectives. It's, it's the strategic objectives um, are set but the implementation uh, at the various levels and the achievement through tactical, uh, obj uh, you know, tactical ob plans and objectives needs to be taken care of uh, by the sales uh, managers. He must work as a team leader, he must guide his sales people to achieve the sales uh, objectives whether it is to, uh, to gain revenues, market shares and profits for the company. He also has to deal with members of the trade channels be it uh, the sales force, be it brokers, be it commission agents, be it telemarketers, be it online channel platforms. So he must also deal with these people and uh, again build very very you know important and uh, relationships not only build but maintain buyer seller relationships. CRM is a, or customer relationship management is being used in a big way uh, with the advancement of technology and with the advent of the internet. Another important role that has to be played by the sales manager is monitoring, collecting and disseminating information about the changes that are taking place in a firm's macro and micro environment. So sales managers must keep themselves abreast about, about information uh, you know about the changes in a company marketing environment uh, with respect to opportunities, threats, they must share customer feedback, uh, they must also provide inputs to on, on the formulation of the uh, sales uh, targets. So with this we come to a conclusion of this lecture 
on the uh, on the uh, roles uh, played by uh, the sales managers and the functions performed by sales executives. The references are still uh, are as follows: Still, Kandev Govani and Puri, Sales and Distribution Management, Pearson Education; Havaldar and Kavale, Sales and Distribution Management, Text and Cases, Tata McGraw-Hill; Panda and Saidev, Sales and Distribution Management, Oxford University Press; Futrell, uh, Fundamentals of Selling, the McGraw-Hill Companies. Well, this brings us to an end of the third lecture on the introdu introduction to sales management. I hope you have found this to be beneficial. Thank you.